We're going to get you better today. We're going to get you better than you was yesterday for just watching this video. Fuck that shit up, Frank. What's good, y'all? It's Phrase, man. We back with another video. Feel me? So today we get into mixing, man. How to make your beats sound good. Now I know you've been in that situation where you've either showed a friend a song that you made or a beat you made, or you know what I'm saying? You was listening to one of your beats, you was like, bro, I could do better than this. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get you better today. We're gonna get you better than you was yesterday for just watching this video, man. We're gonna get you better. So we're gonna get straight into it, alright? So look. Um, I'm making this beat right now. I haven't made it yet, but I was like, yo, I should do a tutorial for y'all because I keep getting um, DMs and everything about people telling me, yo, like, how do you get your beats to sound so good? Um, how do you make your 808s hit so crazy? Uh, like, how do you pan your stuff? Um, what's your sound selection? So I just wanted to touch base with y'all and like let y'all know what I be doing. Um, so yeah, I could like do something similar to in y'all beats. So, you know, we can get them sounding better because we don't want no trash on the beats around here. Nobody wants to hear that. All right, so we're going to get into it. Um, give me like 10 minutes. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to speed it up so y'all don't got to watch me make the whole beat. But when I get to the actual mixing part, that's when I'm going to be back right back for y'all. So let's get into it. All right, so now that I have the melody done, um, it's basically it right here. It's nothing really crazy. It's just, you know, fits um, with uh, octave down. Um, so nothing really crazy at all. And then there's just a, there's just a synth lead and then a top line on one of the instruments. Um, you don't really have to go too like super duper in depth to be real with you um, for most of the time. Uh, so with this, um, all you really have to do is you just have to identify what like the main part of the melody is gonna be. It's going to be this foundational chord um, that I made earlier. Just with that organ. Um, what I usually do when I have stuff like this is I'll, I'll throw in a, a EQ and just cut some of the bass out. So we have room for the 808 later. Um, now when I get here, I'll do the same thing. Maybe boost some highs. Get some more character in there. Now with the melodies, you don't really want anything super overpowering. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this lead here. Move it down a couple octaves so that it's not like completely out of the equation, but it's definitely ducked behind a little bit. Um, now this is already good, but something that's optional that you can do as well is you can pan or you can stereo image. So, um, here's one way that I, you know, you know, create some more space. Cause I'll just pan things to where it sounds good. Um, so that's just some space in the mix because you don't want everything mono. If you, if you have everything mono, it's going to sound very stale, you know? It's not really interesting to the brain. So if you have things in different positions, you're going to sound good. I'm just using the Starboy Rob's drum kit. Um, this has a lot of um, a lot of good shit in here. All right, now that I get the beat down, um, basically, the beat isn't really like nothing really too crazy. Just, um, I'm just playing the beat by itself right here. What you do, basically, once you have everything done, you Highlight all the cells right here. Just click and drag down and hit Control L. It'll put everything into um, tracks. All right, I'm gonna undo it because I already did that. Um, and once you do that, um, I'm gonna play the beat with everything zeroed out at unison. I'm just gonna reset everything so you can hear what it sounds like before. So some things are loud, um, like the hi hat. I mean, the 808 is always going to be loud, so don't really worry about the 808 right now. Um, the crash is going to be a little loud because you know uh, symbols and everything they're perceived louder. 
then you know, anyway, it's done. So you definitely want to take those down. And don't really worry about the levels that I'm putting them down to. Um, it's really just like there's an uh, order of importance when you're making uh, drums and beats and depending on what genre you're doing. So you kind of have to like pay attention to that. Um, but one thing that I pay attention to is um, I want my 808 to be the loudest. Followed by my clap. Followed by any snares or anything that I have like that. And then we're gonna go down the high, we're gonna move it down a little bit. And we're gonna work on the crashes after that. So if you have any crashes or open hats and stuff like that, you can put them all at the same level, but depending on which one they are, you kinda of wanna, you know, go up and down and figure out like how it feels. So this definitely needs to move down. Sorry, I'm recording this video after work. So I'm a little, uh, a little tired, but it's cool. Um, after that, we can bring the, um, the melody back in. So once you have everything done, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a soft on the on the bottom track. So the way that the mixer panels work is whatever's on the top. Um, is going to basically be affecting first, and that's in any type of like uh mixing rack. So basically, think of it like this plug is plugging into this slot, then this slot, this slot, this slot, this slot. So anything we have above, um, is going to be affecting everything um first, and everything on the bottom is going to affect everything in general. So it's kind of hard to explain, but basically, um. Any limiters or anything like that, you're going to want to like have at the bottom usually for like drums and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a soft clipper on the beat. We're just going to leave it as it is. And what a soft clipper does is it basically um, kind of distorts the beat and makes it have some harmonics, but it's not really a regular type of distortion from like, you know, just over volume it's more so like um simulated clipping you know what i mean this is a soft clipper so it, it makes everything clip but not actually on the track just before it actually hits the track it's kind of hard to explain um so what you're gonna do after that is we can throw it on a regular eq boost the highs boost the lows a little bit and we can boost the low mid. And we could do another EQ. I like to have a visual EQ um, in the slot above. And remember, these EQs are being affected before the soft clipper. If I move this down, you see how now the volume is at zero is above zero because any boosting that I do is going to boost it after the track is already being clipped. Now, if I move these up, we're at zero. So that's how the mixture works. Um, so now what we want to do is. Boost the highs a couple of decibels. You don't when you're boosting stuff, you don't want to like take it all the way up. It's gonna sound way too crazy. You just want to bring it up a couple decibels, three, four, five, maybe even six. You know what I'm saying? And some of the instruments I like to pan too, just to create some more uh, interest. You know what I'm saying? And when you're panning stuff, you also want to. I'm getting a phone call. When you're panning stuff, you also want to like bring the volume down a little bit. So that it's not you know drowning everything else out and whatever you're really paying to. This is also an EQ right here. So you can use this if you don't feel like opening up a you know a parametric or whatever. Um, this is the three band EQ, and what that means is basically how many points that you can affect. So there's three band EQs, there's seven band EQs usually, 
And there's some that go up to 20, so you know what I mean? You know, pick your poison. But yeah, this is the one that um comes stock on every single uh FL Studio uh mixer channel. And I'm weird, I like to like pan my 808s and like my claps a little bit slightly so that they're not super center. Because when the artist like hops on the beat, they're gonna be the one directly in the middle. So I like to just have just a couple um just a little bit of painting on like the main drums just to like not have any issues with that. So um yeah that's basically it. I kept everything stock and as you see I don't I don't really use effects on stuff too often. Usually it's just EQs. Um I'll have a advanced tutorial um if you guys are fucking with this video. You know if we can get this video to like 25 likes. You know what I'm saying? 25 likes. If you get this video to like 25 likes, I'll drop an advanced beat mixing tutorial where I'll introduce you know some of the VSTs that I use most of the time on my beats and also another mixer um another mixer preset that I use um to make it really sound crazy. Um but this right here, this is really basic and like people say yeah you should EQ every single drum. That's more so where things are being recorded, but these um drums are already EQ'd most of the time. Um, unless you get stuff from like Reddit and like, I mean, it depends on where you're getting your stuff from, but some drum kits are going to be high quality. Some drum kits are going to be low quality. So you just want to, you know what I'm saying? Pick and choose depending on what you need really. Um, so yeah, that's really the, that's really it. After this, you know, you can go ahead and arrange the beat and there's not really anything else that you have to do. Um, I'm going to stem this out. Honestly, I'm not going to drop this beat anywhere because I kept it pretty basic. Um, but you know, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, I appreciate you guys for tuning in with me today. If you me, I appreciate you guys for coming out. Um, if you guys want that advanced tutorial, I'm saying 25 likes. I ain't asking for nothing too crazy. 25 likes. Um, drop some comments in this in the comment section if you're having uh trouble with anything else with mixing. Um, and also comment if y'all want like a vocal mixing tutorial. Um, I also engineer vocals, so if y'all want a vocal mixing tutorial, um, we can do a basic one, we can go in depth. Um, and I'll also, you know, I'll make a new version of the template that I put in my last video, um, so that we can, you know, you know, for stock, for people who are using stock plugins, um, and plugins that are really easy to get, uh, I'll, I'll drop another template for you guys there as well. So yeah, if you guys like the video, man, I appreciate it. If you like the video, um, if you guys subscribe, you know, comment, if you want to see more, um, also I have my socials down below as well. So if you guys want to see more of me. Um, I stream pretty much every day on Twitch, um, five days a week. Um, I'm switching the weekends now, usually from 8 to like 1, 8 p.m. to like 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know what I'm saying? So if you want to see more of me, see me live, you know, chat with me if you have any questions, man, there. And I also have a Discord, man, so um, I'll put the Discord link in the, in, the, in the bio of the video as well, in the, uh, in the description of the video, man, so... Yeah, I appreciate y'all, man. See y'all later.